Amen. If I had a subject today, amen, I would announce it to be the unconditional love of God. Yes. yes. Unconditional. The unconditional love of God. A book he put out, McManus, the name of the book is Soul Craving. And he made this statement, this quote. He said that if God loves conditionally, he says we all are in trouble. Amen. Amen. So I want to talk about the unconditional love of God. Amen. Very familiar scripture. And he said, a certain man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that fall to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son got it all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land. And he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would have fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no, more, no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father have bread enough and to spare? and I perish with hunger, I will arise and yes. go to my father. And I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me one of thy hired servants. Yes. And he rose and he came to his father, but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But, somebody say but, but. the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe, put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fattest calf and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For this, my son, was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Father, I thank you today that you allowed me, amen, to share with some of the greatest people in the world. And I thank you for it. I pray that the word that goes forth to fall upon good ground. Our hearts and minds will be open. And Lord, if we could just learn just something about the love of God, I believe we can leave here encouraged. And we can leave here, Lord God, a better person. And we can leave here, Lord, not the way we came. And we really will realize what a father is all about. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all pray for this old man up here, okay? <laughs> that he'll be able to preach the word, okay? Amen. Amen. I'll be able to preach God's word Amen. to you. Amen. 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 And amen. The unconditional love of God. In September 2006, sociologists Baylor University released the results of a study looking into America's different view of God. Part of the study was to a survey conducted by the Gallup organization which identified four distinct views of God's personality and interaction with the world. Baylor researchers outline the results as follows. 
Those, number one, are those who believe in an authoritarian God who is angry at humanity's sins and engage in every creature's life and world affairs was 31.4 percent. In other words, they believe in an authoritarian God who is angry at humanity's sin and he's uh, engaged in every part of our lives. Number two, those who believe in a benevolent God who is forgiven and accepting of anyone who repent. Amen. Only 23% believe it. And number three, those who believe in a critical God who has his judgment eye on the world, but he is not going to intervene either to punish or comfort. 16% believe in a critical God. Those who believe in a distant God, number four, who is more of a cosmic force that launched the world and left it spinning on its own. 24.4%. 24.4%. Interesting, isn't it? William Barclay tells the story of a young boy who was uh, seated by his dad in worship. And he was attempting to stay awake. As he was nodding off out of the corner of his eye, he sees his father abruptly, abruptly, abruptly raises his arm. He braced himself thinking his father was going to hit him. And to his pleasant surprise, his father put his arms around him and drew him close and looked down and winked at him. And the boy said, I saw my father in a different light that day. And he went to sleep in his arm. Now, I ask you the question, the congregation here today, how do you picture, how do you picture the Heavenly Father? Now listen closely. Do you see him as a stern disciplinarian ready to punish for sin? He is all powerful and certainly capable of wrath. But, it is difficult to love him and impossible to relax and rejoice in his presence if that is your primary image of him. Amen. Could I get an amen, amen. now? Amen. 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 See, we don't have a complete picture of God until we see him as a lovingly, a loving heavenly father, anxious to wrap his strong arms around us to protect us. Amen. In 1 John chapter 4, 18 and 19 says that there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Because fear involves torment. Yes. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Yes. We love him because he first loved us. Yes. 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 Now listen, you see, he didn't start loving us because we loved him. Come on, God. It wasn't something in us or something we did which God responded. Yes. He loved us before time ever was. Yes. God demonstrated his own love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. In Romans chapter 5 verse 8. Yes, yes. In other words, before me or you ever prayed, right. did anything good, uh, and while my attitude toward God was resistant and rebellion, God loved me, yes. and He loved you. Yes, yes. 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 You see, He didn't start loving us or didn't start loving me and you because we were good. And he won't because we're bad. Amen. He won't stop loving us. Amen. 
Nothing you and I can do to cause him to love us more or less. God is love. It's love. Bottom line. Amen. You see, we will not be responsive to God until we see him as a loving, loving father. Yes. Amen. Who loves us unconditionally. Somebody say that. Unconditionally. Now, McManus, in his book, So Craven, he made this quote. He said, when a religion, when a religion is created on the subtle premises that God withholds his love, and you must submit to a system to earn that love. He said, I consider it the worst of corruption. Unquote. You agree with that? Amen. Worst of corruption. When somebody puts out, you have to earn God's love. No such thing. He loves you just the way you are. Amen. Now the text that I read to you, amen, it's a parable or illustration of the love of God. It is called the, the parable of the prodigal son because it focused, the focus seems to be on the sin and rebellion yes. and loss of freedom of the son. Yes. But it is really the parable of a loving father. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. The parable of a loving father. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because Jesus told the parable to illustrate how God reacts to sinful people who come to him. Amen. You see, the Father in the parable represents God in all of his mercy and his compassion. Yes. Amen. He has unconditional love for the Son manifested in three ways. And after I mention those three ways, I'm going to be finished. After I tell you ten ways that you could be a hero. <laughs> Amen. First of all, generosity. Verses 11 and 12. This passage I read in your hearing, and he said a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of good that falls to me, and he divided unto them he is living. Amen? Amen. Yes. You see, the son asked for his inheritance before the father's death. Yes. The father could have refused yes. such a brazen request, but showed more generosity than the son had a right to expect. You see, generosity comes naturally for a loving father. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. But there are limits of a loving father, uh, uh, of the generosity, uh, as well as resources, and as well as time, yes. encouragement, and affection. But our Heavenly Father has exposed His love for us through generosity. Yes. One of the verses we all like to quote, amen, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen? John 3, 16. So God has given us forgiveness of sin and ultimate hope in Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. I understand the pastor will be preaching the series of message on Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. So this is what we're talking about here. A loving Heavenly Father. Yes. He's our elder brother, amen. He's our redeemer. He's our savior and our Lord, Jesus yes. Christ, amen. amen. And the way to get to the Father is through him, amen. Yes. amen. amen. You see, but the prodigal son rebelled in spite of the father's generosity, and he squandered his life in rebellious living. Yes. Now listen, Dad, even a perfect father can have a rebellious son. God gives us the freedom to rebel against Him. We're not robots or puppets on the string. 
God loves us so much that he gives us the great gift of freedom of choice. Somebody say freedom, freedom of choice. Freedom, freedom of choice. Amen. It's a choice. Whether we want to be obedient or disobedient. Amen. Amen. The second way that God loves us unconditionally is patience. Somebody say patience. 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 In verse 20. Yes. And he arose and he came to his father. Yes. But when he was yet a long ways off, the father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck. And he kissed him. Amen. Amen. The father waited for the son. Yes. Yeah. I'm sure he was tempted to send maybe a search party and force him to come home. But he knew unless he returned of his own free will yes. that he would rebel again. Amen? Amen? Now, someone imagine the father of the prodigal writing a letter to his son. And the letter says, I know that the road you have taken will bring you pain. How can I let you, how can I let you know that we hurt with you. I know the way that you have chosen, son, will leave you lonely and afraid. In the night when you have only the empty silence for company, after those who have used, have used you are gone away, will you know that you are not alone? Can you feel how our arms ache to hold you? How our eyes watch the horizon every evening and search the mist of every dawn with the glimpse of your returning. He said, and though I can't send you this letter, it is written in the wind. No matter how far away you go, amen, no matter how far away you go, you are our son and nothing can change it. Amen. No distance nor choice can make us stop loving you. Amen. 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 Well, okay, when you think about that, amen, you know, amen, no matter how far you stray, how far you go, you know without a doubt that you can come back home. Amen. Yes. You can come back home. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. And that was the end of the letter. Now the father did not disown his son nor chase after him, but simply waited. Somebody say waited. Waited, waited for him Amen. and prayed for his return. Yes. Yes. Not try to force him. Yes. But waited for his return. There's an illustration of this in the movie The Heart Whisperer. It's an old movie classic. Tom Booker played uh, by the actor Robert Redford and he uh, in this movie employs a special gift of breaking wild horses. Okay? And uh, a tense New York magazine editor, editor can't believe her eyes as she witnessed the gradual transformation of her daughter's heart from being traumatized to being tamed. In one telling scene, the heart frightened by the editor's ringing of her cell phone, he galloped off in the far edge of a large pasture. Booker walks into the pasture and he sits down and he waits for what appeared to be hours. The horse, drawn by his curiosity, inches closer and closer. Finally, it cautiously approached close enough to touch, and the whisper, whisperer, and allowed itself to be led back to safety into its own stall. All right, what's the point? The point is, that's the way it is with God. 
He's gentle. He's compassionate. He's kind. Yes. You see, the untamed and the those that have been, amen, criminalized and people, amen, who run from God, he waits gently. Yes. Using the Holy Spirit yes. to draw yes. them back. Amen. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. A well known preacher, J. Wallace Hamilton, told of a preacher whose son was going away to college. Someone asked the son how the son was doing. And the preacher said, Well, he's doing fine. He's an atheist this week. <laughs> now, now think, some of you looking at me funny. Think about what, what he said. He said, he's an atheist this week. The wise father knows that children go through transitions. <laughs> and he gives space for that son or daughter to grow up. Amen. See, God has that kind of patience with you and I. Come on, with you and me. Amen? Even though he is all powerful and we rebel, he patiently waits for us to return. Yes. Hallelujah. He knows the way that we have chosen will lead to loneliness and despair. But he also waits for us to come to him under our own free will. How many can relate to that? to it because I tell you I was born and raised up in a Christian home stayed in church cut my teeth on a church pew my dad was a tent preacher organized churches in the hills of East Tennessee and that's all I know I, I would help him put up tents and tear down tents and spread sawdust and build a temporary pulpit and did all those things. But when I returned, became 18, graduated from high school, walked away from a scholarship, a sports scholarship a college offered me. I said, no way, I'm going, I'm, I'm leaving home. Amen. I'm going to spread some wild oats. <laughs> I felt like, now I appreciate, after I became older, I appreciated the training, the upbringing that my folks, amen, put me through. But I thought at, at, certain, at certain times I was in prison, amen, you know. Didn't have the freedom, amen. But you know something, amen. I stayed away, was as close to the Lord as I should have been. I had... I had uh, reduced in reading the Word and attending church and doing what I was supposed to do as a Christian young man. I want to tell you something. Amen. Deep down in the resources of my soul, yes. the Holy Spirit never quit convincing me of the life that I was living. Why? Because of the upbringing. Because of home. Amen. And I'll tell you what, it wasn't long, amen. Well, 12 years I stayed ready running. But I tell you, it wasn't the work of righteousness that I had done. It wasn't anything that I had done, amen. But it was the grace and mercy of God, amen. It was God through the Holy Spirit kept wooing me back home, amen. Back to the life of a Christian young man. And I couldn't wait after I had made up my mind. Amen. I went back into a church. Amen. And before the preacher ended his message, amen, I felt, amen, as light as a feather. I felt like the curtain had rolled away. Amen. And I had returned to the Lord. Amen. And gave my life back to him. Amen. That was so long. Time, but I remember that. <laughs> so that's the way God is. Yes, yes. He knows when you're ready. He knows, amen, when, amen, free willingly you're ready. Just like the prodigal son, he 
Amen. He came to himself. Hallelujah. Amen. The Holy Spirit reminded him, amen, that home, amen, he had more than enough. He just wanted to be a hired servant. But the Heavenly Father, amen, would even let him get away with his rehearsed speech. And told him, look, I want you to get the best for him because my son is dead, but he's alive. He's back. Now the feet drank to be married. Hallelujah. I'm talking about unconditional love, amen? The Bible says in 2 Peter 3, 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Yes. As some count slackness, but as long suffering. Somebody say long suffering toward God. Not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Second Peter 3 9. Amen. Amen. You see, the prodigal son eventually learned his lesson and returned. You see, when you go into a far country, God does not chase you down, He loves you too much to protect you from the inevitable consequences of your sin. He lets the famine come in verse 14. The best thing that can happen to a rebel is to get hungry, is to get lonely, and begin to long for the relationship at home with the Father. That's the best thing can happen to a rebel. Amen? In other words, you get so deep down in the bottom of the hole that he has to look up to see bottom. That's when you mean business. That's when, amen, you mean, amen, you, you must go home. You, you sort of recognize you're in denial prior to that, but you sort of recognize the condition that you're in and how far away from home, how far you have strayed. Amen? And then a life point, and I haven't been laboring too long, forgiveness in verses 20 through 24. Yes. And he arose and he came to his father, but when he was yet away off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck. Yes. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned yes. against heaven and in thy sight. I know more words to be called thy son. Yes. But the yes. father said to his servant, Bring forth the best robe, yes. put it on him, put a ring on his hand, yes. and shoes on his feet. Oh. Bring the fattest cow, kill it. Let us eat be merry. For this my son, I like that. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be married. Now all this, all this reading, all this reading here in my Bible is in red, indicating that this is Jesus speaking. Yes. This is Jesus talking, the Son of God. No one else. This is Jesus, amen? amen. Yes. Forgiveness. The safest place, let me tell you this, the safest place for a sinful person to go is to God. Yes, yes, yes. He and He alone is the only one who will render, or who will neither, I'm sorry, condemn us nor leave us in our brokenness. Another quote from McManus. Yes. He will not leave us in our brokenness. Yes. Don't care how far we stray. Yes. You see, the Father had not given up. He was not filled with bitterness, yes. but compassion. Was That's a pretty good statement there. Yes. He was not filled with bitterness, but compassion. Now the older son, if you study that passage of scripture, he was filled with bitterness and resentment. Quite a difference, isn't it? Keep in mind that the son was not returning in glory, but humiliation. He left with his riches, but he returned with rags. He left clean and he returned smelling like the hogs. He left in innocent, 
And he returned in shame. Yes. But the father did not make his son uh, bow down or belittle him. He ran to him and he kissed him. He did not even let the son finish his rehearsed speech before he had pulled him close and he hugged him. He had one goal and that is restoring the relationship. And God has one goal for you and I today. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. And that is restoring our relationship to Him. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you Lord Jesus Lord, for your restoration. The Father immediately given again, making Himself vulnerable again. What an expression of love. Yes. This is the kind of forgiveness God extends to you and I. Yes. 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 His arms goes not out to strike you, but to bring you to Him. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank God. Somebody say thank God for Jesus. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ is saying, and I'm going to close, but I'm going down the list here in a moment. The Lord says this. In Matthew chapter 11, come unto me, all you that laden and heavy laden. He said, I will give you rest. And mother, sons and daughters, come unto me. Yes. And I will give you. Take my yoke upon yes, you. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. 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 You should learn of me for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Are you thirsty for God? Yes. He's beckoning us today to come and drink. Yes. Amen. He, the Lord is saying to us, He's the one that comforts us. The Lord bought us with a price that we could not pay. He completes you and I. Jesus. The Lord delights in you and I. Amen. Hallelujah. He rejoices as a bridegroom rejoices over his bride. The Lord is saying to you and I today as a congregation or as an individual, I will never fail you or forsake you. The Lord knows each and every one of us our manifold transgression and our mighty sin. Yet, the Lord is saying to you and I, He says, my grace is sufficient for you. He said, all of you that have repented or repenting, I will cast all, I have cast all of your sins behind my back. I trample them under my feet. I have thrown them in the depths of the ocean. Your sins have been washed away, swept away like the morning mist, scattered like the cloud. The Lord is saying to each of us, return to me. For I have paid the price to set you free. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, my friend, your death and my death are swallowed up in victory. The Lord has disarmed the evil rulers and authority, and he broke the power of the devil. Yes, amen. Who has the power of death. In other words, the it says in the scripture, blessed are those who die in the Lord. Amen. Because what? Our citizenship is in heaven. The older I get, the more I recognize that and realize that. That my citizenship is in heaven. And I want to go and I want to hear him say, come, inherit the kingdom and power to you. Amen. Where there be no more sorrow, there be no more death or sadness or pain. Hallelujah. We thank God for Jesus. Amen. Let's give the Lord praise. Now, Dad, I want the dads to come again. I know you've been up and down. I want to have special prayer, Pastor, to come and Amen. Pray for you. And Dad, would you just come and, amen, stand facing the cross. 
Amen. Amen. If you're a dad, Pastor, come on. They all know what they I want you to be here. Amen. No, okay. Well, I want you to be close by. Lord, man of, Lord, man of God. I respect that. Come on. Any more dads in the house? Do we have any more dads in the house? Seems like there was a oh, that was just men. Okay, I see. Yeah. Amen. Well, I'll tell you what. Men, whether you sitting in your seat or whether you're here today, I just want to let you know, amen, some key things that you probably already are doing, but I just want you to remind you, remind you to keep doing before we pray. Okay? First of all, amen, be around. Be around for your children, possibly. I know I was in the military early in my and my children were very young and I stayed gone a lot but as, as quick and as, as, as opportunity gave, given itself, I was home. So if you are able to be home, maybe with your family and your children, that's, that's the key right there. That's premium. And then learn how to encourage. Learn how to encourage not only your children but your family. Be an encourager. Be a Barnabas. He was an encourager. When all the chips are down. Everybody talks about the Apostle Paul and how he wrote over half the New Testament and what a man of God he was, and he was. Amen. Well, I'm going to tell you, if it hadn't been for Barnabas, no telling, no telling if he would have been able to do what he did. Yes, that's right. Amen. Barnabas wasn't only an encourager, but he went before Paul. That's right. All right, be around. Learn how to encourage. And then admit your fault. We men, sometimes we, we get a little hard-headed in that area. We feel like that if we admit our faults, then that would be a sort of a weakness. But I'm going to tell you, that's strength. Yes. It's yes. just the opposite. Yes. When you can apologize and say, you know, I was wrong. Especially to your children, okay? Amen. Amen. That goes for me, pastor, each and every one of us. And those you brethren, men out there, amen, goes for you as well. Amen. And not only admit your faults, but make trust a priority. Be a man of integrity. And also show tenderness. I know, I know that we are supposed to put on that persona that we're tough. Amen. Hallelujah. Macho. Yeah, strong, amen. but we can still be tender. Yes, amen. Tenderness, amen, yeah. comes from the heart, amen. amen. And then, of course, amen. Love your wife, your spouse, your family. Amen. Let your children know that you love your wife. Amen. Publicly display that love, amen, yes. to your wife. Let them see that you love your wife. And then, of course, always respect authority. Whether you voted for them or not. <laughs> Respect authority. Amen. Don't, in front of your children, don't, don't, uh, even though you want to. Amen. Always, amen. Respect authority. It may not be your choice. They may have done you wrong. But you want to respect authority because you can see how important that is because your children grow up and everything yes, right. you get in trouble. And of course, this should be number one be a Christian. Teach your, uh, number, and another one is teach the Bible to your family and your children. And last but not least, be fun. Do some fun things. Hey Amen. Around your family and children. I mean, you don't have to always, you know, be stoic and show no emotions. Amen. Let the, let the family see that you do enjoy being around the house. You laugh. Amen. You do fun things. Amen. Oh, I tell you, that brings fun to the home. Amen. So if you do those 10 things, you'll be the greatest role model, hero in your in your family you ever thought you could be. And I'm not saying you're not doing that. 
I'm just reminded. Amen. Amen. And we're going to pray. I like the congregation to stand, and we want to pray for these dads because being a father is not easy. Amen. Being a parent is not easy. There's so many conflicting things out there in the world that it's against. It's against the Bible. It's against holiness. It's against what we believe as Christians. So our kids have to fight that battle each and every day as they attend school or they're out in the society. But I'm going to tell you something. I, I, I told a little story about me leaving home and being away from God. I want to tell you, I don't care how much they try to pipe this false doctrine and all the false things in you, if you've been raised up in the church and you have a respect and a love for God, amen, even if you're not living it, you still got it inside. You still have it inside. Because I know they used to, when I was in the military, they used to curse and use the Lord's name in vain around me. I said, look, look, don't do that. Don't do that. I said, look, if you, it's better not say anything at all if you have to use the Lord's name. And, oh, I'm sorry, man. I respect you know, a lot of them would make mockery of, you know, especially, you know, people, people of God. And, and they would talk about the church and make mockery. I wouldn't let them do it around me. Even though I wasn't living right myself. Even though I was away. I still had that in me, that respect. And that's what happens, you know. I don't care what. If you if you teach your children and raise them up in the fear and admonition of the Lord, they'll stick with them. I don't care where they are. And then later on, they will appreciate that when they come close to God. Amen. And when they are close to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today that your love is unconditionally. And Father, Lord, I pray in this message today, it was a message of encouragement, Lord, that, Lord, we're on the right path. And, Lord, I pray, Lord Jesus, for these fathers, Lord, each and every one of them, Lord. I pray, God, Lord, that you would touch them in a special way. Give them wisdom and knowledge, Lord, through the power of the Holy Spirit. As we anoint them, Lord God, we pray. Amen. For your anointing and your blessing, Lord. Bless their going out and coming in, downsetting and uprising, Lord. I pray, God, Lord Jesus, oh God, that, Lord Jesus, that you would just, Lord, continue to use them and bless them. And, Lord, I pray, Lord Jesus, oh God, that they'll continue to rely upon you. And if we've done anything to displease you, Lord, we pray, God, Lord, that you would forgive us. And, Lord, we pray, Lord Jesus, we want to be an instrument in your mighty hand. We want to be used of you in these last days. We want to set a good example for others to follow. In order for us to do that, Lord, we need your help, Holy Spirit. We thank you for the work of Calvary, Lord. We thank you for the cross that we have been forgiven. We thank you for the power of the energy of the Holy Spirit that, 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 that's in our lives, Lord. May we be obedient to the God and to the Holy Spirit, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you're sovereign. You're in control, Lord God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, oh God, that we can rely upon your leadership. We can follow you, Lord God, and we thank you for that because we'll be more than conquerors and victorious. We thank you, Lord, for the love of God that you have placed in our hearts and in his dad's heart. Amen. Hallelujah. We know that we cannot do it on our own, but we need to stay connected to you in Jesus Christ. And we pray for this congregation, Lord, today. We pray, God, if we've done anything to displease you, we ask, Lord God, that you would forgive us today in Jesus' name. We want to walk up right before you in a lost and dying world, Lord. We want to make a difference in our homes and in our community. If there's one here today, Lord, needs healing, deliverance, Lord, I pray, God, that you would, Lord, right now, from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet, to deliver and touch us through the power of the Holy Spirit. And, Lord, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Congratulations, man. Thank you.